Buongiorno tutti. Welcome to uh, Campo Santa Maria Formoso. This is the uh, closest um, campo um, to my apartment. It's right over there. Um, it's a little noisy during the day. Um, quite noisy, in fact. Um, but uh, um, unfortunately, I, I can't really show you the colors too well at night. Um, there's a certain um, like color themes uh, of the architecture um, when you go to different cities. And um, in Venice, uh, they seem to like a, a certain color set. Obviously, this is the hotel behind me. There's a lot of white buildings, right? The marble and, and, and that kind of thing. But a big color around here is this, I think it's coral. I don't know, but it's, it's not quite a pink. It's not quite a red. Um, and uh, you can see some flourishes up here. Um, but uh, it's a it's a pretty unique color when it uh, like building wise um, and it seems to be uh, around here I don't know the reasons for this I'm sure it's probably building material but definitely the pink which I'll show you behind here the pink um, is uh, the type of marble that they can get around here um, it does have a pinkness to it. Actually, I think you could probably see it a little better on this On the church tower or the, the clock tower or, uh, I'm constantly getting my uh, clock towers and bell towers mixed up, but this is a black bell tower Simple way you can tell a clock tower versus a bell tower is there are bells in bell towers, right? <laughs> um, but you see that marble pink Ooh, uh, backwards um, you can see that pink um, in the marble, and they just kind of go with it, and uh, um, it's it's actually really nice. Um, but like that seems to be like the Venice theme is this pink marble. Um, you can see it a little bit more in oh yep there it is this building here as well. Now of course this isn't marble, uh, but they've emulated that color, right? And I just love I love the Venetian, you know. Um, northern uh, Italian, very French influence with the all the windows, um, the borders or uh, the shutters, and um, and just the angles that they they take um, to make their windows. So just it's gorgeous. I just love that. Fantastic. One last shot of this. Uh, I think it's a hotel, um, but you see the balconies, the open shutters. Um, and uh, and unfortunately, uh, Venice does get a little dirty because we're right by the the, the, uh, the water. The sea air is just constantly pounding everything around here, so it's probably a full-time job to keep these clean. So you can see that they get a little uh, dirty, and I would imagine that's exactly the appeal for that color right there. It's because it doesn't um, it it can take on a little dirt um, without it. Uh, like the same reason why I never wear, I would never, ever, ever wear white pants, right? <laughs> Just, it's going to get discolored, right? So I always wear, you know, anyway. Um, another shot of the, uh, the Campo, beautiful buildings. Just love it here. Um, today, uh, I went up a clock tower. I know that because it has a big clock. Uh, but more on that later. Buongiorno tutti. Welcome back to Venice. Um, it's much later now. It's nighttime. And in fact, a, a mist has rolled in, uh, making everything seem very, very haunting and cool. Um, Kind of neat. Um, I was out here taking uh, uh, sunset shots, which hopefully I got a couple of those um, good ones. But I thought uh, I'd just take a little walk and check out the mist. Look at that. It's all spooky and haunted and fun. Um, but today's big adventure um, was uh, climbing up the clock tower, uh, the San Marco clock tower on top of the, uh, um, well, the, the St. Marco's uh, Piazza, right? 
I mentioned the other day that, uh, you know, there are campos here, not piazzas. Um, there's only one piazza, and the reason for that is, uh, again, I mentioned their, their fields, but they're also smaller, and uh, Saint Mar San Marco Piazza is huge. Uh, I showed you that the first couple of nights, just overwhelmingly big. Um, and there's this huge complex um, that stands against the basilica, or across from the uh, basilica. I say against because apparently uh, it was built as uh, a defiance against the basilica, which at the time was um, a private basilica. Um, and so the government and, uh, and the people um, came in and built the, uh, the big um, plaza square uh, as well as the building that surrounds it and uh, then they, they added to it to make it even bigger and of course the, they built that big clock tower as well or sorry they built the built the big bell tower this thing we'll find out a little bit more about that uh, in a couple of days but um, I'm walking towards the Basilica now um, but the reason why the clock tower is so significant is that it was kind of a marvel of engineering um, that started right in the Middle Ages and has been developed uh, um, into quite uh, a fancy system since and I'll show that to you right there so the Basilica is, is right here um, but the clock tower right up here all along there and uh, the facade was created um, by the uh, um, by the city uh, so that um, uh, you could see that what time it was out to sea which is where we just were right um, and it has a um, it has a time it has a digital time um, that uh, appears in uh, five minute increments right so three o'clock three oh five three ten and so there's um, a 12-sided um, disc that rotates in in the middle and what the cool thing was um, going to visit was we we stood behind um, those uh, those wheels basically and watched it uh, change time and make a big thunking sound that I thought meant that things were broken and all this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so it's got, undergone quite a few changes. Um, the different levels have meaning. And then this part right here, which I have photos of, is an astrological clock, um, which is particularly fun for two reasons. One is this part um, that we can see here um, is a fancy one that has the um, the earth, the sun, the moon, um, and then the the, uh, the months and that kind of thing, um, uh, interpreted by the astrological signs for those uh, times. But on the other side, if you were to walk through that tunnel and look back towards it, it has a much more simple uh, version of of the clock, um, which just basically tells you what hour it is. And uh, it was said that the the commerce and the nobility and the educated were out here and could interpret it, but everybody else in the town, <laughs> you know, they just needed to know what time it was. So that's all they got, right? Um, which is kind of fun. And it also has uh, the bells up top, uh, which ring, which if you saw my pictures first, um, you'll actually see uh, me standing up there. I was up top here fun spiral staircase that gets um, smaller and smaller and more cramped as you go up um, but what a fun experience there's this little there's this little uh, door it's two doors two very thin doors um, very nondescript you see them as you go through that tunnel there and uh, and it's just um, these two old school doors that we got to go through um, you wouldn't even you know, uh, think anything's beyond there uh, if you didn't know. Um, and just so just fun. Like, if I didn't find out about this tour, it, it only takes place like uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And uh, you have to go with a guide. And there's English, uh, Italian, and I think French. 
um, maybe Spanish. Um, and that's it. So three tours, three days a week. Um, so if you don't get in, <laughs> you don't get to, to check it out, right? Um, I wasn't allowed to take videos there. Um, so there's no me complaining about uh, going up any stairs. <laughs> but there weren't weren't that many. Uh, not like not like this thing that we'll have to check out sometime this week. Um, but it was a fun experience just to see how how it worked. Of course, because it in back in the day it was all uh, weights, right? So you know a weight would just like fall at a, a you know. Um, a certain um, um, timing to it, right? Like the gravitational pull would pull it down and that's what would move all the little me mechanisms, right? And then to reset, they would crank back up, right? So very similar to how you, uh, you wind your watch, right? Um, and of course it's completely elaborate and it has to take care of, it has to take um, into consideration the minutes and the hours and the days and the months and the um, the tide, the moon um, and the sun and all that kind of stuff. And um, what's really interesting about this, um, the um, astrological part of the clock, is that this was built before Copernicus. So the earth right in the middle and the sun and the moon go around it and it doesn't have any planets or anything like that. So it was just, it was really obviously Venice, uh, you know, being uh, by the sea and everything, it's very important that you uh, you know uh, about the moon and the tides. And, and of course, for the commerce, you need to know time. And I also found out too that uh, midnight used to mean um, uh, uh, sunset. So uh, back in the day, midnight was, or zero hour, or however you put it, was actually more along the lines of like 7:30, um, and um, and the bell would go off and do a little fancy thing to tell the workers to go back home, um, and uh, or it was time to go home, so that you didn't have to go home in the dark. Then they basically just weren't allowed out <laughs> until the morning, right? Um, but the reason why I'm out here at this time of night is supposedly. Um, the the bells start ringing at exactly midnight and it does it at uh, uh, I think um, since COVID it only does it at midnight um, but it, it's also supposed to do it at noon um, which I didn't want to wait around for tomorrow noon <laughs> to do this so um, if I got that right you'll see that at the end of this video if I haven't um, I'll see if I can uh, find some sunset video or something <laughs> instead <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, what a fun day. I got to learn about clocks and climb upstairs and uh, get a nice view of the city, which I have not done yet um, up until today. Um, Venice to me right now is either coasts or tall buildings and alleyways, right? So it was really nice to get up there and like, oh wow, look at that, and, you know, and, and see some of the buildings. So that was great. Um, so with that, I'm going to wait around and uh, try to take another video, uh, then I'm going to bed. <laughs> because, uh, you know, back to work tomorrow. Um, but tomorrow's big visit is in the Basilica. So I hope everyone watching this is doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. Venice is awesome. You guys are awesome for watching my videos. I know some of them aren't the best, especially lately. So, um, you know, uh, I appreciate that. I, I really do. Um, I'm trying to mix in as much like history stuff, travel tips, um, my own like kind of personal journeys and whatever. So I know like, you know, um, it's not going to appeal to everyone, but you know, maybe every third video would be, in, you might find interesting. So um, I hope that's okay. Um, but you know, if there's anything else too, you'd like me to cover, you know, let me know. Um, I'm open. Anyway, that said, um, I, I hope you guys have a great night. I hear the weather. My home, anyway, uh, wasn't good. I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry knowing that it was 18 degrees here and I was actually wearing a t-shirt outside. Um, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry about your freezing rain and uh, whatever else is going on there. 
March, right? Take care of yourselves. Um, think about the summer and what you'd like to do and what adventures you'd like to go on. Until then, Adumani, Arrivederci. Unfortunately, we can't see anything because of the mist that has come in.